Hi, my name is Artur and this is the game that I created having no experience at all in just a week using Construct 3. So buckle up with me on this AAA adventure. I'm kidding, it's a very simple game, but it was so much fun and joy to create and then to play it afterwards with my friends. And I want to make it very clear, I have no game dev background at all. I'm a music composer, I make music for a living, so I just wanted to try myself in something new and fun. And so can you. Oh, and please, don't, don't judge my drawings. I drew everything myself and I just did the best that I could. This is how the game unfolds. It's, it's an intro and it's not a real studio, it's just uh, the way the big companies do it. This is the main menu. This is our hero, our main player, whom we're gonna control. To the left is his weapon, bass guitar. The dude actually is our bass player in our band, no drink, no pass. Check it out, I will leave a link in the description. Moving forward, this dude had a birthday and I wanted to create a game at the end of which, as a reward, he would receive information about the location of his present. If we press start, we are going to the loading screen. Here we are presented with a story. It's not in English and I'm not going to translate it to you because it's so ridiculous. Nothing in this game should be taken seriously. Basically, it's a compilation of gachi memes with the actual message to the bass player that he should find uh, a hint regarding his present. Now we press as we can and let the gameplay begin. So here we are, we can move left, right, the controls are pretty simple. These are enemies, they can't see us because of the wall. That's our head up display, it's just showing our health bar. This is our checkpoint, it's a sword, and if you cross it you can see that it emits some nice salute particles. Every time we pass through a checkpoint we are saving our progress. That's how we fight, we are throwing bass guitars, we have unlimited amount of bass guitars, and our enemies are trying to hit us. That's pretty much everything to it, that's the whole gameplay. And of course you, you've gotta find a way through this labyrinth to the next level. It's a health pickup, it looks like a heart with a vein pumping blood through it. We have several possibilities where to go and the map is not available to us because it will be too obvious how to go through this maze and we wanted people to explore the map. Okay, we got a hit, we got a hit. And as you can see, health was subtracted from our bar and we're gonna restore it with a health pickup. And it works. Oh, and, and we see our first bug. This mob was able to go through the wall and it's the first time I see it. We play this game through and nothing of the sort happened. Maybe artificial intelligence evolving and saying, nah man, I'm gonna bend your rules. And next thing you know, I'll be out there bending you and your wife. But I hope it's not the future that we'll see. After all, humanity has the control over the artificial intelligence. Am I right? Oh, this is our local flora and fauna. I did these birds, they are harmless, they're just there to make the world feel a little bit alive. Besides, not everything has to be hostile, right? You can't kill them, you can't interact with them. They're just flying around. In this level there are two types of enemies. The white floating heads are fast, but they don't have much health. And these cyborg knights, they are slower, but they are more difficult to kill. As we progress in the game, we will be introduced to the new enemies. At the end of the game, we will fight a big difficult boss, so stick around to check out the best boss in gaming history. Great, we found another checkpoint, meaning that we are on the right path to the exit. And if we get killed because our health bar getting somewhat thinner and emptier, then we can start from this point instead of the beginning of the map. The map consists of textures found on the free resources on the internet. After that, you use your creativity and you decide where you wanna put walls, where you wanna put lakes, and so on. We are getting close to the end. 
that's our ride to the next level. And here's another bug that I was aware of and I didn't fix because, hey, remember, one week. So the idea was you kill the enemy and they might drop a health pickup. And instead of spawning at the place where you kill them, they're getting spawned at the beginning of the map. But hey, maybe it's not a bug. Maybe it's a feature because the balance has been good so far and we made it to the end of the level. Welcome to the second level of this game. It's a dungeon, it's very dark and scary, it's got this ambient, distant music. Also, we're gonna encounter new enemies in this level. Like this walking hat, for example. It's got a lot of health, it's a tough guy. Here is another new character. It's fast, it jumps at you from the dark, but at the same time it's the weakest one. Because I thought it would be fair for the game balance. If you get killed, you respawn at the latest checkpoint. But your progress is saved. That means that enemies are not respawning back. You can make them if you want to raise the difficulty of your game. A couple of words about the game soundtrack. I wanted to make it as weird as possible. I took two of our songs and I stretched and twisted the hell out of them. Just to make it as laughable and ridiculous as the whole game in general. This level is also a maze. And you've got to explore this labyrinth to find the portal to the next level. The only difference is that it is dark and the rooms and corridors are much smaller. Even if you try shoot everywhere, you still get surprised and jumped at. Plus, sometimes it's so many of them in these narrow corridors. I hope that this helps the game keep the player as trained. Here is another example of a bug. When you are overlapping a wall and you're trying to throw a base, it's not flying in the intention direction, it's rather hitting the wall where you're stuck. By now you might be thinking that this game is a broken piece of sheer art. I needed time to fix all these problems and I didn't have it. Unlike big companies, which can move their deadlines as they please, you can't move birthday, so everything had to be done in time. And here we go, final level. This is our boss fight, and you can hear that the music gets intense. I composed this piece a couple of years ago for another indie game, and it's a good vibe for this particular instance. You hear the shots? That's our boss waiting for us. And the boss is no other than our bassist's wife, and she's throwing hearts at him. You should have seen the faces of my friends when we first got to this point. It was hilarious, and we all had a good laugh about it. By the way, the boss is trying to calculate our movement to catch us in advance, which makes dodging a little bit more difficult. Nothing fancy though about the movement part. The boss goes up and down, and that's it. But it doesn't need to worry about dodging your bases because it's got plenty of health. And there's a catch to it, which I did not tell to my friends. The thing is, you can avoid the fight and you can spare bases wife by going straight to the portal. This feature turned into a good joke in our circle. Here we have more birds flying around and they are gigantic, because why not? It's my game and these creatures are gorgeous. Just look at them go, such a beautiful family apparently. And we've hit a jackpot. The game froze and it won't let us to the next level. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I can't help but wonder how Video Game Donkey would review my game. Probably it will be like... This game... This game sucks dick. Video Game Donkey. But not to worry, we will open the last level in the editor and we will play it from there. And yes, you can play your game straight from the editor. However, let's first dive into the project and see what's under the hood. So let's take a look at what the editor window looks like. It's the main window where you compose your game, you can move stuff around, you can create maps, you can add elements on top of your map like monsters, like pick up items. Uh, here is the project view where everything that is used within the game is stored and organized. Below this you can see the layers layout which works pretty much just like in Photoshop. Uh, here's the example of the sound that I used. And here below is the music that I used. 
This is the dungeon level that I created for the game. You can see the whole map right here. This is the shadow layer. It's just a black square with a low opacity level and with masks around the key elements, like the main player or the portals or the oasis that I added just to make the level not that fully black. The enemy can be placed wherever you want within the map. Every instance of an enemy has its own unique number. And you can copy-paste the instance with the properties that you like and adjust them or leave them as they were in the previous instance. Here is how the boss fight stage looks in the editor. Here is the final stage in the editor, it's a photo taken from the drone. Uh, here is the code that I wrote for the game, or rather I followed the tutorials or I just copied from the examples that I liked and where I saw the mechanics that would fit my game. And to be honest, it's not like a regular code that you are used to seeing. It's more of a blueprint, designed to be accessible and friendly to non-programmers like you and me. Enemy logic. It's very simple. Once the enemy has the player in his line of sight, then he first moves towards the player, second we disable his previous movement, which is dictated by the behavior we set for the enemy. For example, my enemies just move up and down, left and right to patrol the territory. The third line is crossed. It didn't work. I wanted the enemy to make the sound when he spots the player, but the way I made it, as long as the enemy sees the player, the audio keeps going, it just plays over and over. I probably won't go back and fix the game, but if you guys know how to fix this, just let me know in the comments. So don't be really intimidated when you see all this. I am not a programmer, I am not a coder, I don't, I don't understand all this stuff. I just applied basic logic and I followed the tutorials and that's it. Ask yourself questions. What do I need? How do I create it? Go with these questions on YouTube and 100% that you will find the answers. And once you've found it, don't be shy to experiment with the instructions to make your own things. This is the website and this is the sample projects that are made for Construct3. You can play them all and you can open them in your editor and see how they are made. That's the sample project that I used to create my own boss fight. As you can see, here you have a tank army and you command them and you have the enemy tanks which are rotating their turrets towards you and they are emitting projectiles to kill you. That's exactly what I needed and I didn't know how to make this happen. So what I did, I just opened their project in my editor and I found the code with the commentary, which is very helpful and very useful. And I found the exact lines of code that I needed to make my boss do the same thing. I needed animation for the game. And how would I get it? Turns out that Construct has inbuilt animation editor. It's very simple, it's close to primitive, but it's just what I wanted because, again, I'm very new to this, I don't know how to use all these fancy programs. So what I did, I just cut the faces from the photos and I used the drawing tools to create different frames and then laid them down into simple sequences. That's another example, that's my friend, and you can see that in every frame it's the same photo, but different drawing every time. You see the lines twitching and some new elements are appearing, like he opens his mouth and he changes direction where he points his little sword, just to make things look alive. That's what the animation of the bird looks like. It's like 17 frames and it just flaps his wings and changes the direction and that's it. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Just messing. This is the animation that I created for myself. And I decided to attach some pair of nice wheels. Uh, because uh, my character is super fast and it's the best character in the game. It's super scary because it jumps at you from the dark and you don't even expect this. What's peculiar about this character is that by accident, I added some visual effects to the animation sequence and look at the effect it brought to the character. It's more intimidating than before and I was so amazed by the result of this mistake, so I decided to keep it. 
The portal is very simple, it's just four frames. Everything is organized and assigned to different layers. You have the tile maps where everything is connected to the map and the outlines and the textures for the map. Now you have the game where all the characters are stored, the shadow, the hut, well, and so on. You get the idea. I'm loading currently the last stage. And because it's not a natural transition, we are not spawned at the place where we're supposed to appear after the boss fight. But we start somewhere here on the road and we find our way to the summer house and it's a real house where we hang out a lot. So it's a special place for us. And listening to this cheerful song from our album, we get to meet all the characters, but this time they are not hostile, so we can stick around and, and just party with them and enjoy this scenery. By the way, I'm the lead singer in our band, so it's me singing in the background. I hope you like it. And uh, remember what we had to do. We had to find the clue about where the present is hidden. We have to go to the house, and it's not marked, but all of our friends know where the entrance is, so it's okay. And this is the final room, where the bass player gets the message about the whereabouts of his present. The music in the background conveys the feel of accomplishment and well-earned rest. It's also from the same indie game that I composed music for. Overall, what do you think about my game? I'm not trying to sell it, nor am I sponsored in any way by this amazing, super advanced company which has released this super amazing product, Constructs 3. I'm kidding, I'm not sponsored. I'm just trying to share an idea with you of how you can interact in a fun way with your friends or with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. Or you can arrange a proposal this way. I'm just saying. You can do this not only in Construct 3. It's just an example which I picked because I was too intimidated by the other advanced programs and software. And turns out that now pretty much everything is available and uh, everything has tutorials. Look, Take a look at what I have created just in a couple of days in Unreal Engine 5. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please press thumbs up, leave a comment, or spread it amongst your friends. And that's it. Thank you very much, and best of luck to you.